How are you guys? Tiago from TBS Aquatics. Uh, just doing another short video. Uh, today we're going to be doing a small video on uh, water chemistry, uh, mainly on uh, dechlorinated GH and KH. Just going through a few different things uh, on the topic. Uh, I'll start off with um, a dechlorinator. Dechlorinator normally comes in like a liquid form. You can get powdered forms as well, but most of the products are in the liquid form. Basically, what dechlorinator does is, you know, when you take your tap water out, it has got chlorine and more importantly fluoride and some heavy metals in the tap water. What this does, and it basically eliminates that. Um, so any water that you, like on your water changes or if you're filling up a tank, generally you put dechlorinator in. Um, the only time you don't use dechlorinator is if, if you have like rainwater, which has no chlorine. Um, just be careful with rainwater too, depending on your roof, um, what type of roof you've got. But um, yeah, it's, um, you know, that's the only time we really don't use uh, dechlorinator is if the, or if it's or RO water that's been filtered. Um, otherwise, you do need to use uh, a dechlorinator. Okay, next one um, on the list is general hardness. Okay, general hardness is um, generally it comes in a, a blue crystal. There is liquids again, th different products on the market, but the most common stuff is the blue crystals. Um, what general hardness is, is the amount of minerals in your water. So uh, the, the general hardness of an aquarium. Now this is very important. Now, depending on what fish you are stocking, does depend on the amount of general hardness. This particular product, there's actually different ones. This is a, a tropical and cold water one, which a teaspoon like, uh, of, of this stuff, which is eight grams, will do 10 liters of water. And that will bring up your general hardness to around about uh, six to seven, um, in, which is about 160 parts per million. Uh, but in degrees, it does bring it up to about about seven degrees of hardness. That's for normal tropical fish. Now, when you when you've got fish as like Africans, this particular one, it's a yellow crystal. Africans need a high general hardness. So, where's your your normal tropical is seven? Let's say seven. Your Africans run at about 18. So, anything 17, 18 degrees of hardness is what they need. Um, and then you've got things like this one is actually for discus, which run at a lower general hardness. You can run uh, discus at anything, you know, two to four or five generally. Generally, I run discus at around about three to four degrees of general hardness. Um, so there is different amounts of hardness for different fish. You do have to be aware of that. But your common stuff like your goldfish and your common fish, generally, look, anywhere between six and eight is a good general hardness to keep your, your fish at. So most of your products, you be aware to every product's different. Make sure you read the instructions. Make sure it'll tell you the degrees in general hardness. Um, so, you know, with this particular one, it's a teaspoon per 10 litres. So that'll give you the desired general hardness. Okay. Okay, carbonate hardness. I'm going to go a little bit into KH now. Uh, a lot of people worry about pH and, you know, is, is my pH all right? Uh, carbonate hardness eliminates a lot of that. Um, you'll find once you start using carbonate hardness, you don't often check your pH that often. Uh, because what carbonate hardness does is lock in your pH at the desired amount and holds it in there. You won't get the fluctuation that you do with not uh, using it. So basically, on your normal tropical fish, you've got different KH for different fish. This one here is a KH7, what we call KH7, which locks your pH at 7. Roughly between 7 and 7.2 it locks it in. Now, you put a teaspoon per every, this particular product, product you, you do it this way. There is a lot of products, once again, on the market that do it differently. You put a, a teaspoon per every 10 litres and it locks your KH at around about 6. Um, so your KH level is at 6 and then locks your pH at around about 7, 7.2. Once again, you've got different KH powders for different fish and different products do work differently. Um, we've got Africans, for example, locks your KH at 9. 
so uh, nine degrees, and then it will raise your pH to around about eight, eight point two, and it generally just locks it in. And the only way your pH can fluctuate generally, you've got to be careful, is if you've got things like carbon and so forth that can actually extract the KH out of the tank. Like carbon is an absorbent, and you've got to watch out it doesn't absorb, for example, the sodium out of the KH powder. That's generally the only time that you get fluctuations. If you've got something in your filter, or purigen, for example, from CCAM, which extracts stuff out of your tank, you've got to watch it, because you can sometimes stuff around with your KH powder. It's fantastic. What, there's different ones. You've got ones for discus, which lock your pH at, you know, 6.5 and so forth. Uh, ones for tanganekins, which is a higher KH again. Uh, we generally run tanganekins at around about 18 to 20 uh, of a carbon harness, which is really quite high. Um, but yeah, so different ca carbon and hardness for different tanks, but it's a must, guys. Look, what happens when you don't use them? Sometimes water chemistry changes in your tank when you're not using KH, and you can get pH dropping. For example, if your pH, once the pH starts dropping under six, you know, to your fives, fives and a half, what happens is the bacteria in your filter will actually die. Um, you then can actually play a lot of, uh, can have a lot of problems with your filter system if your pH does plummet. And then what happens then, the bacteria in your filter dies, you, your tank generally crashes. So we want to eliminate that factor. Um, and the KH you know, stops that from happening, basically. Um, the old days when we used to have to check, you know, almost on a daily basis, see if the pH had fluctuated, have gone. We put in the KH powder, and generally, I, I, look, I still check for it. I still do the tests just to check every level is all right. But instead of checking every day, I might only check every two weeks to make sure that the amounts are in. Well, after I've done a water change, to make sure I've put the right levels in. It's pretty straightforward. Most of the products, I mean, read them. They do vary from company to company. Um, but most of the products do the same thing. They actually lock in your pH and stop it from fluctuating. Um, so, you know, it's a fantastic product. Um, it's been around for quite a long time. Um, but you'd be surprised the amount of people, even people that have kept fish for a very long time that don't use GH and KH. And it makes a world of difference. GH, well, you'll find with GH, a lot of the minerals stop you from getting, like if you're not using GH, fish are more likely to get white spot, you know, costia, um, a lot of bacterial infections. The GH does help with a lot of that, um, having the minerals in the water. So just be aware of that. Um, they, they get it in nature, so it's not something that we fabricate. It's, um, it's actually minerals that we're putting into the water. Okay, I'm just going to run through a quick test. How do you, how do you actually test for GH and KH? Uh, I'm just using an API test kit, which is a I mean, available pretty much anywhere around the world. Um, with GH and KH, both of them work in a very similar, you know, very similar way. Uh, it's not like pH where you put two drops in, look at the colour. What, what you actually do with general hardness is, you've got your, let's say your five mil, you put a drop in and it goes like a yellow colour. Now different products, different colour. But what you want, you put in, like, you count the amount of drops. So I'll just put one in, two, three, four, five. You actually shake, I know how much the GH is in this tank, but um, it's actually quite high. Um, and you shake it, see how it hasn't changed color yet? Six, seven, nine, 10, 13. Okay, 13, it still hasn't changed color. Generally you just do one at a time. 14, 15, shake it. 16, 17. Okay, 17. This is actually from a Lake Tanganyikan tank, so it's actually quite high. It took 17 drops for it to change to the green colour. So that will give me 17 degrees of general hardness. So if you are in a normal tropical tank um, and you want the GH, it should only take seven drops for it to change colour. And you basically just count the drops until you shake it and until it actually changes colour. I'll do the KH now. Once again, this one's quite high because it's from Lake Tanganyikan. Okay, 
18, 19, 20. So it took 20 drops in order for it to change colour. So when it changes colour, that's the amount. That's 20 drops, so it's 20 degrees of general of carbonate hardness. So one, like that is Lake Tanganyika, so it's really high. Um, yes, yeah, so basically you count the amount of drops that have um, that you've put in, and that will give you the degree of hardness. For general hardness, if it took two drops for it to change colour, then it's two degrees. So if you want seven, you've got to add more crystals in order to get the desired amount. It's pretty straightforward. The if if you want look. With fish tanks, if you're worried it's off by two or three, don't stress. You can, on your next water change, or you can actually add more in, um, you can frustrate. It's only if, if, you know, you're five or six degrees, then you should do something about it. But general, don't stress. If it's out by one or two degrees, don't stress out. Don't go, oh no, I'm gonna kill my fish. You know, the fish can handle different um, amounts of minerals in the water. One or two degrees ain't gonna do a huge deal. Um, and look, breeders um, have their own recipes and what they run, you know, the, their tanks at and so forth. But uh, most pro good products anyway will tell you what degrees of general hardness, you know, you, you, for what fish you desire. For example, if it's discus, we run it at a lower general hardness. Africans, we run it at, at a much greater general hardness as well. Um, look, there's not much to it, but it, it is a very important part. Um, the only other thing, they're the three major um, chemicals using. For example, if you were to begin a system, they're the three major ones. There is a, a fourth one, which is, look, you've got live bacteria. Um, if you want to speed up the process of cycling the tank, you can use live bacteria as well, which, you know, makes the process. Normally it takes about four to eight weeks to cycle a tank. With live, live bacteria, normally it halves that. So, you know, you're putting bacteria in to basically start up your filter and to start processing ammonia and converting it to nitrite and nitrate a lot quicker. So normally, normally, with, if you use live bacteria, it does ha take half the time, but it's not a must. You can actually do it naturally, just adding, you know, having ammonia in the tank and it will convert to nitrate normally in about four to eight weeks. So that's, that's sort of a bonus. If you want to, if you're a bit more impatient, you want to add live bacteria. This stuff also too, if you're doing big water changes, you should use a little bit of bacteria, especially if you've got heavily loaded tanks. Um, it just helps with, um, when you're taking a lot of water, you can take a lot of the bacteria with it. Um, so this just helps put a bit back in as well. But that's not a must. Um, the other three, I, you know, I don't set up a tank without them. Uh, dechlorinated, general hardness, carbon hardness are a must in my books. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you next time. See ya.